When the Google Pixel 6a was first announced, we were keen to see how it would compare to the more expensive Pixel 6. We discovered there wasn't really a huge amount of difference in performance. So now that the Pixel 7 is out and has replaced the Pixel 6 again, our curiosity got the better of us. Does the Pixel 7 ramp things up enough that you should spend the extra cash, or should you save money and get the cheaper model? I'm Cam Bunton from PocketLint, and in this video I'll hopefully help you to decide. And while you're here, if you could hit that thumbs up, subscribe and tap the notification bell, that would be wonderful. There are a few things worth noting on the design side of things that can make the difference to the experience of using these two phones. And there are positives and negatives to both. Now, they both clearly look like they belong in the same family. They have that same rectangular look with minimally rounded corners that give them an almost perfectly rectangular look. In the Pixel 6a's favour, there's the fact that it is narrower, shorter and lighter, and that does make a difference. It has a more compact feel, making it a tiny bit more single-hand friendly. There's no denying, however, that the construction and materials of the Pixel 7 are sturdier and more robust feeling. The frame feels a lot more rigid, undoubtedly helped by that solid aluminium camera bar that runs across the back. With that, plus the fact it's covered in Gorilla Glass Victus, it should be able to take more of a beating than the Pixel 6a with its plastic back. Still, on an objective level, both are water and dust resistant to high levels. There's IP68 on the 7 and IP67 on the 6a, and that means they'll both do just fine with the usual everyday accidental water contact. There are a couple of other minor things too. One is the bezel around the display. The thinner frame on the Pixel 7 gives more of a feeling that the content is immersing you, or taking up more of that front surface area. Another is the positioning of the buttons. They're slightly lower down on the Pixel 7, and that makes them just a tiny bit easier to reach. Now, Google made the decision, for whatever reason, to offer a tiered refresh rate display system across its Pixel range this year. That means you get 60Hz on the lowest model, the 6a, and 90Hz on the Pixel 7, and up to 120Hz on the Pro. But it's always worth remembering with refresh rates that once you're in your content, watching videos or playing popular games, it's rare to have one that needs more than 60 hertz. However, that doesn't mean you can't see a difference between the 7 and the 6a, but it's usually just in the general software or user experience of the phone that we'd spot it. Scrolling quickly through the app drawer and settings menus, or sliding down the notification and quick setting shade, or just swiping to go home, the Pixel 7 definitely feels smoother and that gives the illusion that it's more responsive. But really it's just that the screen can refresh faster so you don't see as much stuttering when things are moving quickly on screen, and icons and text stay sharper in motion. From a purely visual standpoint, there is a difference too. Both have a similar approach to colours and they have identical resolution, but there's no doubt that the panel on the 7 is better than on the 6a. It's brighter for one and delivers higher contrast, so HDR content is more effective you don't need to turn it up as high to enjoy watching a video. With the two displays at 50% brightness, the Pixel 7 was more vibrant, with really good bright spots, where the Pixel 6a was a little more muted with the same setting. When you get out in bright daylight, it basically means at the extreme end that you'll be able to see the Pixel 7 screen clearer. As for loudspeaker sound, I wouldn't say either is better here. Both have a system where the bottom edge speaker is fuller and louder than the top one, and so you don't really get that fully balanced stereo sound but they're both decent enough. Now what's really interesting from a performance standpoint is when it comes to loading your favourite apps and games, there's not really much of a difference between these two phones, or much of a difference in what these two phones can handle. They'll both be just as good for opening your favourite games thanks to the fact that the 6a uses the Tensor processor. That's the same chipset that's in last year's flagship 6. Like we mentioned when comparing the displays, however, you will notice that bit of extra smoothness from the Pixel 7 in certain areas and that helps give it a feeling that it's a bit faster. Another area we did notice a difference was in the temperature. We're used to phones getting a little warm sometimes after extended periods of gaming or using the camera, but in the Pixel 6a it was far more noticeable. It gets pretty warm under load, where the Pixel 7 doesn't really seem to. The 7 just seems to be able to cope better during longer stints of gaming, video watching or camera usage. And as for battery life, there's really not much in this, if anything at all. It's 4,410 mAh on the Pixel 6a, and 4,355 on the 7. And that translates to the two phones having extremely similar battery life. A full charge should comfortably get you through a day, and on most days, with two or three hours of usage split between games and social media, we got to the end of the day with over 30% left over on both. 
after taking the phones off charge at about 7.30 in the morning. Now, cameras were always going to be an interesting comparison point between the Pixel 7 and the 6a, if only because so much of what makes Pixel cameras good is actually in the processing and machine learning elements. So in some scenarios, the two can take very similar pictures with the same approach to colours, contrast and detail, but that's not to say that they're the same. In daylight, the first thing we noticed using them side by side was that the Pixel 7's main camera has a wider field of view, so it fits a little more of the scene in and could allow you to shoot better shots closer to object. It also seemed to handle light and colour a little differently, drawing in more light where, by comparison, the 6a's images just look a tiny bit more contrast heavy and dark. And this was consistent across the main and old ultra-wide lenses. Of course, the big difference is zoom level. The higher resolution main sensor means the Pixel 7 can digitally zoom further, all the way up to 8 times in fact. So at 2 times zoom, it still looks nice and sharp. At 8 times, the detail does fall away a bit, but it does give you that extra versatility. Pixel 6a stops at 2 times zoom. When you get into low light situations, the Pixel 7's upgraded Tensor chipset seems to handle it better, taking nighttime shots quicker and you can manually increase the capture time if you want as well, allowing you to draw in even more light, lifting more detail from the shadows than what we saw on the Pixel 6a. What's more, the Pixel 7, as a result of better light and colour processing, was much better at retaining those colours in the background, but the Pixel 6a sometimes washed those out. But the Pixel 6a is still a powerful camera though, offering the astrophotography mode that automatically detects when it's stable and mounted to a tripod, and enabling it to take pictures of the stars at night. The Pixel 7 did lift more light here again, but the fact that a mid-range phone can even do this is pretty impressive. The Pixel 7 has more up its sleeve in video mode too, with the ability to shoot in 10 bit HDR, giving you more dynamic range. It also has a cinematic mode, which is fun, but actually quite rough around the edges. It struggles to accurately detect edges and often has weird ripples around objects where it's being confused by the foreground and the background. Now, the interesting I find with this comparison in the end is that they are both very good phones for the money, and the extra that you pay for the Pixel 7 does get you a better phone. It's better made, feels more durable, has a better camera system, wireless charging, smoother animations, and a brighter display. So you definitely get what you pay for, so if you want the better experience, this is the one you need to get. However, now that it's a little older and a little cheaper, the Pixel 6a is still a stunning phone for the money, and one that still delivers the key Pixel experiences for those who either can't or don't want to spend more. If you can though, the Pixel 7 is the one I would advise this time. Let me know what you think of these two phones in the comments section down below, or you can grab me on Twitter, I'm at Cam Bunton. If you did like this video, please do leave a thumbs up for us, that'd be amazing. Tap subscribe and the notification bell, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.